Welcome to Sunny's, the car wash factory. In conjunction with this training video, please reference each component's owner's manual, available at sunnysdirect.com, before performing any installation, repair, or maintenance procedure. Each manual details specific requirements and settings necessary for the safe operation and maintenance of your car wash equipment. Hey, the next piece we want to go over today is our pendulum. Pendulum is one of our, our, our latest products over the last couple of years that really make wheel cleaning easy. It allows us to follow the wheel exactly on the wheel for four to five feet of travel. And it doesn't matter what the conveyor speed is, we're gonna follow it every time because the tire is gonna hit this little pusher bar with the rollers on it and it's gonna push it forward. And that spinner is gonna stay right on that unit all the way through to the hole. And then it's gonna return back with the counterweights and bring it right back to home for the back tire again. It works real simple. It doesn't take a lot of maintenance. There's a couple of grease fittings to take care of, and you've got a swivel in here that eventually will wear out. Um, the biggest culprit to wearing that out there is, back, is actually imbalance. Imbalance comes from a clogged nozzle. A lot of people like to use Reclaim on their wheel cleaners because it's a good spot to use it in. However, the Reclaim eventually will clog a nozzle. And if you have one of these nozzles clogged, this is gonna run out of balance. And it's gonna cause vibration, which will transfer to the bearings in that, in that, in that swivel, and that's what'll cause it to go. So whenever you walk through your tunnel, always take a look and inspect them to make sure that they're working properly. This is our standard um, spinner assembly with just a 15 degree flat fan nozzle in the center. If you've ever seen uh, some of the mag wheels today, they've got some grease right in the center hub that comes from the wheel axle bearing. And this here is designed to be just a V and a fan right on that point that cleans it while these zero degrees are going around at two different dimensions and cleaning the rim and the brake dust itself. As you can see, all of these nozzles here are straight on. The rotation is created by the two outside nozzles. They're fixed angles. The pipes are welded in place. If it doesn't spin, the, the, the first inkling is to make actually take and twist the pipes and give it a little more pressure. And um, that's the wrong thing to do. So normally you want to go in and check the swivel and see if it's moving freely. It should be able to free spin in either direction with no problem. And if it's not doing that, then it's a swivel problem. If you bend the T-bar, you're gonna damage the T-bar and have to replace both. So when it stops spinning, check the swivel first, don't bend the T-bars. Your nozzles get cleaned quite simply by unscrewing these here like we showed on the Omni. You unscrew these here, we've got a little tip nozzle inside. That tip nozzle can be cleaned with a tip cleaner, um, blown out with an air gun, and then put back into work and be ready for operation again. The unit does have some grease fittings. Again, they're just pivotal grease fittings just to help this um, arms stay level. There's two on this side and two on the driver's side. Um, they just take one shot of grease, uh, two, uh, two pumps every once a month, and that'll take care of that. We've got two more pivotal bearings up on the very top. And it's something we don't always do, but they're UHMW bearing blocks. There's a stainless steel plate with a grease fitting, and that's what's allowing this to pivot back and forth up in that area. And basically, if you do the same thing, two shots of grease uh, every month will allow this to have nice fluid motion. It's all gravity driven. It's set up just like a pendulum. We swing it into the hole. When it gets past the hole, it wants to come home. The weight, the counterweights up top, there's two of them, help to keep it at home, ready for the back wheel. So what we're after is that four to five feet of travel, enough to get the wheel to turn upside down and the spinner spinning on it the entire time. Um, we'll get the grease gun. We'll show you where those grease fittings are. We'll grease those. I'll grab a wrench and pull one of these nozzles off and show you that tip nozzle. Let me get my tools. Over here, we've got the two grease fittings we talked about that get grease um, once a month. Two shots, two shots on the other side, and a wipe clean. We'll take a walk over to the driver's side, and we'll show you those two flange bearings that are over there. Here, we'll give these two shots of grease. And wipe those clean, ready to go. Good time when you're working on your bearings is take a look at your set screws, make sure they're in all the way or not. Um, these ones here is a new install, so we're gonna come back with a wrench that looks like there's a little excess screw showing. We'll tighten those up to make sure they're good and tight. We'll come on the other side, and we'll show you how to take apart a nozzle and give that a check. We'll come in here, using the little leverage, hold it onto one of those arms. Makes it easy to loosen up the tube nozzle. We we'll take the nozzle, the nozzle, the tube nozzle off, and inside we have a uh, TP nozzle. It's a stainless steel hardened uh, nozzle without threads. It's just a tip nozzle that gets held on by a compression fitting. Um, it's got a very small orifice in it. The nozzles get sized according to how many uh, pumps you're gonna use to run the unit. If you're gonna run one pump in here, you can run up to an 04 nozzle. 
an 04 nozzle, we have 10 here, we'll get us a 20 gallon a minute flow rate. Um, the nozzle needs to be cleaned. We use one of our tip cleaners, uh, something you can pick up at Home Depot. It's our welding supply piece. Uh, take the smallest one just to go in there and poke out any contaminants or any trash that are in there. Blow it out with a, with a little blow gun or rinse it off with a little bit of water. And then you're ready to put it back together. Some people seem to think that this may be an obstruction in the back, but it's not. It actually is a little guide vein that helps to control the water and make it uh, assemble better so it gets a nice, better stream on there. The tube nozzle, um, sometimes if these are clogged, you might see water coming out of um, the side holes, but that's not the way they're supposed to work. When this nozzle is installed and it sprays water, it actually draws air in through these holes, and then it breaks that little stream up and reconfigures it so you get a much better flow coming out here, and you'll get a much better performance. As long as the nozzle's clean and it's, the air tubes are clean, it'll draw air in, it'll give you a nice um, solid stream of water that'll maintain its pressure all the way to the vehicle surface or the wheel surface. Once we've cleaned it, we put it back on here. This is just like a hydraulic GIC fitting that gives us a little compression fit. And we don't have to over tighten them. We just want to get them on there and give them uh, just a little bit snug up. And that's good. Go around and check the rest of them. Little one the same, same way. Um, we like to keep that line in line with the, the wide pattern because then it won't interfere with these side ones. And it's only a 15 degree pattern, so it'll only be this wide and it won't interfere with any of the zero degrees. And it'll give it a nice clean, clean setup. Next, I want to explain about a couple of the rollers on the floor. It's designed uh, to wear out. Something's got to give all the time. So we've actually engineered um, a nice little sleeve on there. So we have a wear sleeve that can wear out um, before we damage the shaft, which is the expensive part. And then the rollers themselves have UHMW in them, so we'll have a worn roller, we may have a worn sleeve, but our shaft will maintain its integrity for a long time. Those parts are inexpensive and easy to replace. And I just want to show down here how you can tell easily whether you are worn out or not. So down here we have our, our roller shaft where the tire actually sits against here and drives forward. This roller needs to spin backwards. That's why it's smaller than the outside wheels. These ones here don't get a whole lot of wear, but this one here sure does because it takes the pressure. When it hits it, it's down on the deck. This is spinning forward while these are spinning backwards. So instead of letting the shaft wear out, we actually built a sleeve that goes underneath this roller here. And this roller now is riding on another stainless steel sleeve. So as this wears, you can look at it and you'll see that this roller here will be getting close to the ground and not be able to get your fingers underneath it. If it's touching the ground, it's going to cause a problem because it'll become a break. You want to change this roller or this sleeve before that happens. To do that, we actually undo our set screws to loosen this up here. And then we're gonna to need to take a hammer. Don't knock it all the way to the pit. That'll be a problem. We'll take this off. So this is a sleeve, a nice quarter inch thick wall sleeve that we've machined out to fit over here nice and snug. And that's what this roller rides on. So depending on which one's worn, if this is intact and this is worn and sloppy, you can replace the roller. If the sleeve is worn, we replace the sleeve. Again, not expensive items, $19, $20 for each piece. It makes it last a long time. Again, you'll see how nice and easy these move. If these are scored, there may be a time you want to replace these rollers, but inspect those while you have them off. To put it back together, once you get your new one, we're putting the sleeve on first with the roller all at once. You want to kind of set them up so that you can get at your set screws. I'm going to roll these up a little bit. makes it easier for me, putting it back together and then just tap this right back on again. Not too tight, because they have to be able to spin. I've had a couple of guys call me up and say that the, the, the unit's not returning and they want to add counterweights. And when I go look at them, these are put together just a little bit too tight and they're not rolling, they're dragging. The dragging on any one of these components will cause too much resistance so that the counterweight system and the gravity won't work for you. We'll tighten up these two set screws, and this one here will be ready to go for another 10 or 20,000 cars. Okay. A little bit more tightening there. It's a split collar, so there's no need to really overdo it. And there we're good to go. All right. And that's an easy, simple repair that'll keep this pendulum working right for you for quite a while. I want to go up top and show you how to adjust the bumpers so that the, the unit's not bouncing into them and, and running forward. And we'll get up and we'll take a look at that. So right now what we're going to look at is if I push this into the hole, we're getting great movement. It's moving nice and freely. All the bearings have been greased.
But right here, what we see is we're hitting the bumper a little bit hard and we're pushing it forward again. So we've got a little bit of room over here to move our bumpers up before we come into contact with our cross frame. So we're gonna move, take these off and move them up another inch, inch and a half, and see if we can get it to, to calm down when it comes back a little bit. It does not need another counterweight to hold it here. It needs to just come down a little bit quieter. So we're gonna push this out of the way, gonna loosen up both sides. Robert's gonna help me. We're gonna slide these up a little bit and see if we can't change the way that comes home. Okay, and that'll stop just about an inch before the other one is. We'll give this a snug up. Just snug it up. We'll give it a push in the hole and see if it calms down by the time it gets here. Again, we're in the hole, dressing the tire. And that was a little bit softer. So that now will hold it back here. So we'll get a full four and a half, five feet of travel for every vehicle. As long as we're not crashing frame to frame, this is where we want it to rest when it comes, comes home. And then the next tire comes in and gives it a push and we're on our way, okay? And then that kind of bumper stop there is the last adjustment we have to make on here. Um, as long as you keep everything greased and everything moving freely, this is gonna give you a long lasting clean wheels, keep your customers happy and uh, uh, great performance and a lot less labor than cleaning wheels by hand. We're gonna take a walk in the back room. We're gonna be able to show you how to adjust the pump pressures for a pump like this here on the H25. So watch that video and you'll learn how to adjust your pump pressure for a unit like this. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching this maintenance overview video. Please visit sunnysdirect.com and review the complete owner's manual before attempting any installation, maintenance, or repair of this component. There you'll learn necessary procedures, settings, and other considerations required for the safe operation of your car wash equipment.